Hi, my name is Kevin Smith. I'm an Agilent Applications Engineer, and I'm going to show you how to set up uh, an RS-232 or UART decode on a 3000 uh, series scope. This would apply for a 2000X or 4000X as well. It would be very similar for uh, the older, uh, somewhat fairly similar for the older 7000s. Um, all right, so always we want to default the scope, and I've got the, the signals running through live, so I'm going to hit an auto scale. You know, otherwise you want to just turn on your channels. I don't have it's nothing on three actually, so I'll turn that off. Um, um, and so one nice thing about the auto scale is it actually set, presets the trigger levels for you, and so you really don't have to worry about that. But then I want to hit the serial hard key, and um, this guy right here. I want to select uh, the 232 mode or UART, which is at the bottom. Okay, I want to tell it which I've got on what. Um, so on channel one, I've got my receive. Channel two, I've got my uh, transmit. The thresholds are just fine, and really these are the trigger levels. You can hit the back button once. Um, then I want to set up my bus config. Um, for the sig particular signal I have, in fact, um, I've got a, I've got, I do have eight bits. We can also set it to um, uh, basically an arbitrary number. Well, uh, sorry, yeah, between five and eight, uh, nine bits. I want to go to eight, and you can do that with this knob. Um, my parity is odd. Okay, my baud rate. I want to set that. Um, it actually have 19.2. There's a lot of presets, and if I scroll down using this knob or up, where is it? There is a user. There it is. User defined, so I can I can dial this in. Um, uh, if I really wanted to, but uh, I will just stick with the uh, preset. Doesn't really make much of a difference between going user and the same number. But um, okay, going back button. Um, uh, I can change my bit order to LSB or MSB, and I leave it to LSB. And ooh, gotta get that to eight bits. Okay, there we go. Now I can hit the back key again and go to settings. And here I can change the display, but um, I've got framing on or off. Okay, you can change that as you see fit uh, to match your bus. Um, and I can change the base here to binary, ASCII, or uh, hex. Okay, um, so now I want to set a trigger, so I'm triggering on something useful besides just an edge. Um, so I want to uh, scroll down to UART. And in particular, I want to trigger on, there's a lot of things you can trigger on. And in fact, if you hold down any of the hard keys or soft keys, it's going to bring up context-sensitive help, tell you more about what that does. But I um, really want to trigger on um, the transmit data. I can just um, keep hitting the button or use the scroll wheel. And I can do greater than, not equal, less than, greater, uh, equals. But I'm going to do equals. And I'm going to set this to um, hex 04x, sorry, 04d, excuse me, with a little spinny knob. This knob. Getting there. Great. All right. And now I'm um, uh, functionally decoding the data. Can't see a ton, so I don't have a ton on screen. There we go. All right. And <clears throat> when um, when this guy flashes red, that's actually an indicator that I've got a parity error. That's okay. And if I really want to see it quite a bit more, I can uh, hit the serial key. I can turn on the lister and display on. And there we go. Um, if I scrunch it up a little bit more in time, as long as my sample rate is high enough to, to decode the bits, I'm good. Okay. I'm going to hit single for us. There we go. And um, one thing is that's kind of fun, if we go serial, um, uh, settings, and uh, I'm going to turn the base to ASCII. Okay. And let's bring back the lister. As it turns out, it actually decodes to 
and we can use the knob for this. Whoops. Serial scroll listed. There we go. Now the now this knob will control it. You can see that it actually says. You'll notice that I'm singled it, it actually moves it around. Let's do this. Let's see if we can do it carefully or we can zoom in on it to see it. That's okay. Whoops, that was adjusting the trigger level. Wrong knob. It says Agilent MSOs are number one. Hey, that's cute. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to push this button in once and then zoom in on the signal, and we can hopefully see it there. Agilent MSOs are number one. Um, <clears throat> and then if we wanted, we could um, also uh, do the uh, – we could use some searching – and we could search on things in the uh, UART bus, okay? Um, and pretty much anything you can trigger on, you can search for, which is pretty cool. Um, and then, um, let's just see. Um, and then the uh, navigate buttons here, we hit search uh, lister, and uh, we have an auto zoom there, and we could pop through it and didn't find any because I don't have any nulls, but that's even but you get the idea it'll bop, bounce around. And I think there's one more option I want to show. Yeah, options. And then um if I change this option here, so that's under uh serial to lister to options, I can change the time tags. Um the uh time tags um, are currently referenced to the trigger position. But if I wanted, I could change these to the previous row. Okay, So then it tells me the difference between, uh, the time difference between when the, um, uh, when the individual data uh, bits came, as opposed to um, with respect to the trigger. So that's the uh, really short version. Um, on the 3000X and on the 4000X, I could actually do a second serial bus if I wanted. That's not available on the 2000X. You only get one bus at a time. Um, and also on the 3000X, 4000X, um, I could also use the, uh, digital cha uh, the digital channels to do this if it made sense or not. Uh, that's not the case on the 2000. You're basically limited to decoding <clears throat> and triggering serial buses on the analog channels. All right, thank you for your attention.